Psalm number 36 from verse 5. I'll be reading from the English Standard Version. Psalm 36 and verse 5. If you're there, let me hear you say amen. amen. If you have NIV, it's fine. It's close to King James anyways. But I just want to read a translation that helps us a lot. It says, your steadfast love. See, I, I, I was looking for that emphasis. And NIV just say your love. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. A man and a beast you save, O oh Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O oh God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. And you give them drink from the river of your delights. If you read it in King James Version, verse 8, he says, they shall be abundantly satisfied. Somebody, that shall be your testimony this year. <laughs> Put it in verse 8 in King James. Verse 8 in King James. Everybody read one, two, go. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house. And thou shalt make them drink of the river. This year, as you shout amen, God will give you double measure. <laughs> How many of you believe there is power in the word of God? I will give you one more time to confess it. Don't let your neighbor shout more than you. I want you to declare one to go in the name of Jesus. They shall be abundantly satisfied with the fatness of thy house and thou shalt make them drink of the river of thy everything that you need to be satisfied this year jehovah will give you double measure remember this is a jehovah that blows mine some of you forgot that in january god will blow your mind this year if your amen is greater than your neighbor, double measure shall happen for you. Verse 9, verse 9, verse 9, and we end in verse 10. For with you is the fountain of life. In here, in thy light, we shall see light. Eh? In thy light. Inside of you, Lord, I will see where I'm going. I enter your presence. The door to my next level opens. I don't know whether you understand. I don't. Why some people think that the journey is all the way there? You enter the presence of God, the shortcuts. He shows you the back door. I don't know why you are reacting like that this morning. This month, God will show you that he loves you too much. Verse 10. Oh, continue. Tell you about continue. May God don't stop loving you. Oh, continue thy loving kindness unto them that know thee and thy righteousness to the upright in heart. Lift your right hand up. Let Jehovah locate you this morning. Father, this morning, we open ourselves to the love of God. Tonight, this morning, as I declare the word of God, let every word that proceed from my mouth be the anointed word of God that would touch and transform the lives of your people. 
anoint these lips of clay that as your word come forth with power it will break yokes it will lift bodies it will set the captive free in the mighty name of jesus we will not go back the same way we came but our lives will be illuminated by the power of your word we'll be careful to return all the glory and praise unto you in jesus mighty name we have prayed come on let me hear the believers shout a big amen look for five people tell them god loves me more than he loves you come on <laughs> come on tell them i said i know it that i know it that god loves me more than he loves you oh my god the way you are saying it i don't like it tell your neighbor god loves me that he loves you if you believe it and you believe that testimony let me hear your amen like doctor. sit down you are like you are god's favorite sit down i want to speak to you on what god told me to share with you this morning on the greatness of god's law tell you about the greatness of god's law one more time shouted the greatness of god's law god is not only a loving god god is love god is not just a lover god himself is love first john 4 8 b says that that our god is love say it with me god is love say it like you truly mean one more time god is love the greatest thing that can ever happen to a man is to be loved by god and to consciously enjoy the experience of god's love do you know you can be loved by god and you don't know it you can be loved by god and you don't even enjoy it don't take advantage of it you can be loved by god and you could act ignorant of that love this year may you experience the depth of god's love Amen. god's love is rich it's rich with mercy it's rich with kindness in some translation you see it as god's steadfast love in another translation you see it as god's loving kindness it's not just love but it's a love that is full of mercy and kindness in that love is everything that you need just understand this as a parent my child may do something that is not right but that doesn't stop that child from being my child the love for that child has been prepaid before the child was born has been designed by god because each time i look at my child what do i see I see myself. Do you know when God looks at you every morning, he doesn't look at you like the way you look at yourself. He looks at you as himself. How did I know that? The Bible says we're created in the image of God and after his likeness. Tell your neighbor he loves me. Despite the fact that man was the last of God's creation, he still put us in control of all the things he made. We were the ones that were made last. He made some things on the first day. Made some things on the second day. Made some third. Made some fourth. Made some fifth. Then the one he made at the end. He told the one at the end, I put you in charge. That tells me no matter where you are at the back of the line, God can move you to the front because of his love. If that shall be your testimony, let me hear your amen. Look at what psalm 8 verse 3 says say when i consider thy heavens the work of thy fingers the moon the stars which thou hast ordained what is man that thou art mindful of him the son of man that you visited him he said for thou hast made him a little lower than angels you know that actually the actual translation in hebrew actually means that you made him lower than elohim well the truth is this in all the translation it says that has made him a little lower than him. and it's okay it doesn't matter no matter how low you are look at the next verse the bible says and thou hast crowned him 
So that tells me you may be low, but there's a crown coming upon your head. Tell your neighbor there's a crown coming upon my head. You have crowned him with glory and with honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. All sheep, all oxen, yea, even the beasts of the field, the fowls of the earth, the fish of the sea, whatsoever passeth through the paths of the sea. O oh Lord, how excellent is your name. It's God's love for humanity that made him give man charge over the works of his hands. And I thank God that we are not a product of evolution. Some people think that they were they came from apes. Well, I, I'm not an ape. I was made in the image of God. Tell you about I'm made in the image of God. And when he made us, why he made us in his image? Because he has special love for us. So when you look at yourself, look at yourself as God's representative on earth. In that office, in that school, in your marriage, in wherever you find yourself, know that you are God's loved child. You are God's favorite. Tell your neighbor, I'm God's favorite. Yes. God's love is not just great. God's love is vast. God's love is magnanimous. Even more than what words can describe. Even if you try. I'll give you some words that I use to describe love. Just try to see whether that would fit with God's love. Unquenchable. You can't quench God's love. It's still as hot and as fresh as the very first day when you came to this earth. Undeniable. Undying. Unending. Insurmountable. Unquestionable. So no matter where you find yourself, don't question God's love for you. You will soon see it in the scripture where the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, what can separate us from this love of God? Nothing. Not even death. This year, may God show his love towards you indefatigable immeasurable endless everlasting to everlasting why is this word coming to you and I it's for you to know this year that God loves you greatly even more than you love yourself it's important for you to keep that at the back of your mind that no matter what you go through this year that God has a special love for you if you love a person you will take care of that person if you love a person you will wish that person well so as you walk through that door for that interview know that he loves you if it will destroy you he will not give it to you oh you are not hearing me <laughs> god wants to give you the best God will not give you to a man that will panic beat you. He loves you more than that man. You must see yourself like that. You are not feeling me this morning. God will give you somebody that will pamper you. He said he will pamper you with his love. Tell your neighbor, I'm getting ready to be pampered this year. The opinion of nobody counts. When God made you, God did not call a conference with your enemies whether he will make you. God loved you and he called God, he called Jesus and the Holy Ghost and said, let us make man in our own image. So if you don't know what you look like, just look to heaven. You know where, where you look. That's where your DNA is coming from. This year, may God show you mighty love. Oh my God. I said, may God show you mighty love. If you believe it, shout a big amen. Before I go into some other research that I did about this love of God, if you read where we read or go back to where we read in Psalm 36, David was speaking. And there's a man that we know that's after God's heart, a man that was really loved by God. David was a man that made a lot of mistakes. David committed a lot of crimes. I don't want to go into some of those things, but David did some bad stuff. David killed a lot of people. Oh my God. David did some things that no ear should hear about. But God, he said, this is a man after my own heart. God found him. His love located him. Do you know, no matter where you are, the backside of the desert, the love of God can locate you today. Oh, if you shout a bigger amen, the love will locate you quickly. David said, your steadfast love, oh Lord, steadfast love, oh Lord, extends to the heavens. 
extent that, that that love God, the love you have for me, is too long. It's not short at all. I can't even measure it. Extends to the from earth to the heavens. So no matter how much men try to cut, if men try to undercut you, they can only undercut you up to their height. But there's still more love. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. Let people deny you. Let people say, I'm not going to help you. God will extend the rest of the love. If God deletes the help of man from his own help, he still has plenty. He's telling you, about, I don't need the help of man. I need the help of God. That's why I don't look to, and listen to me, I, I don't look to no man. Don't misunderstand me. I respect men. I'm not saying you should disrespect men. I respect men. But I don't look to men. That's why David said, I look up to the hills from where come men. You should only look, look to where your help is coming from. Because only someone that loves you that will help you. Some people spend their energy trying to impress people that don't love them. You are wasting your time. You are wasting. If someone loves you, you don't need to do anything. You don't need to. You don't need to do nothing. You are, you are not hearing me. You don't need to shake nothing. You don't need to act nothing. He just loves you. Today, God will show you His love. If your amen is greater than your neighbor, the love will come to you in double measure. Yes, access to the heaven. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your faithfulness. Do you know what the cloud is? How many of you have ever you flown? I know you many of you have flown. I mean, before we came here, we all flew. I hope you did. We flew. Extends to the cloud. There's no end in sight. God can stretch it. Extends to the cloud. He said, Your righteousness is like the mountains. Another transition said the majestic. Have you seen the beautiful mountains? Things that nobody can see. Mountains, heavy, far. His righteousness extends to the mountains. And the Bible says, Your judgment is like the great deep. Man and beast, you say. So God's love can locate both man and beast. If God can take care of the sparrow, will he not take care of you? If he can take care of the lilies, will he not take care of you? Listen to me, you need to understand that. If the, the Bible says these birds, they don't plant, but they still eat. Somebody planted, they are eating for free. God's love can locate you, I'm telling you. You, you, you need to quit looking at your pocket and your bank accounts. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? If God wants to bless you and attack, do some things for you, he will do it. He will do it. Just, you need to just find out, Lord, what do you want to do for me? Sometimes I wake up in the morning and say, God, bless me. Just, just do something that will make me know you are God. He will shock you. You, people, you are not hearing what I'm saying. Don't, don't, some, some people are sorry for God. Let me know so much that God has abundant, abundant love. It doesn't end. I don't know that you understand what I'm saying. Don't I'll just say, just well, just just give me this. I'll just manage it. No, 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 no. He will give you more than you can afford. God is able to do exceedingly more abundantly above that what you can ask for things according to the power that walketh within you. There is so much power to give you better than your imagination. That is what I'm telling you. That listen, listen, listen. It's not because of your works of righteousness, but because of his law. You need to understand that. Put that at the back of your mind. If, if God will bless you with whatever you're asking for, that means it's not because of your works, it's not because of your grades, it's not because it's because of his love. Tell your neighbor he loves me. You know, I was singing this song that the choir sang, Your love never fails, never gives up, never runs out on me. God's love never fails. Even when you give up, God's love does not give up on you. Even when you give up on yourself. Hey, God's love it, with God. Is this, as far as you are alive, there is hope for you. This year, you will see the manifestation of God's love. David now went for that to say, how precious is your steadfast love. I will define steadfastness for you in a little bit. How steadfast is your love, O oh God? The children of mankind take refuge in the shadows of your ways. You see, the feast 
they shall be abundantly satisfied. So because of God's law, when you love a thing, you would, you would do everything to make it do well, go well. So this year, God's going to furnish you with so much love that whatever you need for life and godliness, God will give to you. Is somebody getting what I'm trying to say? So when you come to him, you know, there's a way you, you come. If, when my child comes to me, and many of you know when little children want something from you, my child does not come to me asking for McDonald's and doubts whether I can buy it. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? If they want anything, they do. Sometimes they just say, I want to follow daddy. Because they know mommy will say no. So they enter daddy's car. And when we're going, they say, daddy, it seems like this. We, we're just hungry. As far as it is something that is going to bless them and make them happy, we just enter the place. Ask my wife. And if I buy, I don't buy one. I've, I, don't, I don't believe in buying one thing. If you've ever walked me, with me, and there's nothing like one. I will buy so that just in case you want to make a choice. Today you want to eat hamburger, maybe just fries or whatever. Just buy it. God, when he loves you, he satisfies you with everything. Can I announce to you this year? This year, God will satisfy you with many. Is somebody hearing the sound of my voice? Tell your neighbor, God loves me, God loves me. Yeah, they shall be abundantly satisfied. I discovered that God's love has anatomy, has physiology, has biochemistry. The anatomy of God's love, the physiology of God's love, and the biochemistry of God's love. How many of you want to know the anatomy of God's love? The anatomy of God's love is talking about God's steadfastness. It's the structure. Anatomy is talking about structures. God's love is steadfast. What is the meaning of steadfast? It's resolute. It is dutifully firm. It is unwavering. There's a steadfast loyalty about God's love. It is faithful. It is committed. It is devoted. It is dedicated. It is dependable. It is reliable. It is steady. It is true. It is constant, staunch, solid, trusty, firm, determined, relentless, implacable, single-minded, unchanging, unwavering, unhesitating, unfaltering, unswerving, unyielding, unflinching, uncompromising. Did you hear what I used to qualify God's love? That is to say, no matter whether it is cold or it is hot, no matter whether the whole world is saying something else, when God loves you, God loves you. He said, Jacob, I love. Esau, I hate. God loved Jacob. It doesn't matter what, whether Jacob stole the blessing of Esau. Let me tell you, even though he didn't steal it, he was already loved by God before he came out. This year, may the love of God locate you this year. That's the anatomy of God's love. This love of God is so great, so magnanimous, so gracious. Hear what God says. Deuteronomy 7 verse 9 says, Now therefore, the Lord your God is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. So when God loves you, the effect of his love extends to a thousand generations. So understand that the love that God is showing to you is not just about you. It's about many generations after you. Is somebody getting what I'm saying today? Your children will enjoy from that love. Your grandchildren will enjoy from that love. May God show you love mightily in the name of Jesus. I don't have a lot of time, but just to tell you under the anatomy, the love of God is rich. It's inexhaustible. The Bible says God, Ephesians 2, 4 to 5 says God being rich in mercy. So in the nature of God's love, it's good that you understand it. It's, it's God being rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us. It's great. The kind of love that God has for you is not allergic love. It's not epileptic love. God's love is, is flourishing. It's more than available. You, you cannot exhaust it in one generation, in one lifetime. You know, 
I don't want to jump ahead of myself. Pastor Obina, everything God needs to take care of you is around you. When God loves a person, everything that is necessary to show you that he loves you is there. Your eyes just need to be open to it. The problem is people are so focused in themselves that they don't allow themselves to receive God's love. You could be so focused in your situation that rather than accepting the love that is coming to you, you want to handle it yourself. The problem is, if you want to handle it, you, some people die in that situation when help is next to them. I give you an instance in the scripture. One would have said Hagar in the scripture was a concubine. She's an Egyptian hanging out with Abraham. Got pregnant because Sarah said, go and sleep with my master. Got pregnant. Is, uh, Ishmael. We all know she's a slave. We all know the child, of course, Abraham is not supposed to do that. But God did not care whether she's a bond woman, whether she's Egyptian. God just heard the cry of the boy. And she was crying, let the boy to die. Let the boy to die. Because there was no water. And when God heard the cry of the baby, God showed up and told her, look, right there, where you are, in that same location, there is water. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? You are broke because you have not seen that there is a provision made by the love of God. I don't hear it. Some people, is pride. I'm telling you, some people would have been married if only they opened their eyes. I'm the one telling you. I'm the one that said it. Some people would have had a job if only they opened their eyes to see that around them is job. Who else knows where there is job except people that have job? There's a way you will talk. There's a way you will relate and open yourself to the love of God. That when you open yourself, somebody asks you, okay, please, what do you do? You say, oh, um, I'm looking for a job. And they do. With the way you behave and you open yourself to the love, somebody will carry your case and be looking for a job for you. I'm not, you, you see, this statement I'm making, talking about God's love, people don't understand the depth of it, but I grew up, because I'm going to speak to you as a pastor, I grew up in a place where we would go to church, we would serve this God, and I discovered that for every step of the way that God took care of us, God did not use somebody outside. God used somebody inside the church. I promise you, God be my witness. Even to getting college admission, there will be somebody as we are praying. My mom will say, my son is looking for admission. They talk to the person. The person says, oh yeah, I know this other person. From there, admission, open. Even to the coming of America that we came, it was after 60 days fasting and prayer, the door opened. It was in church that God opened the person that remembered and co-signed the visa lottery, paid the tickets, to come. If we wanted to borrow, you will not have people to borrow you. But God we connect. What I'm telling you, people don't understand. If you are in God's house, where he said, they shall be abundantly satisfied. Where did he say the abundance will come from? From the house. From the house. Stop looking outside. Everything you need is in the house of God. You doubt me? In his presence, in there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are what? Everything that you need, Pastor Obina, everything that you need is in the house. When I was starting my business, not to talk too long, I was discussing with my wife. I was putting the, the business plan together. I put the business plan together. I tried to write. I couldn't get this stuff together. 
I tried it, I tried it. I couldn't get it together. My wife saw me one day and was like, what are you doing Saturday morning? I said, I'm trying to put this thing together. It took my wife three minutes. She's not a dentist. Three minutes to put the mass together. Three minutes. You know what? I would have paid 2500 to a consultant somewhere outside. When I talked to someone, they told me, there's a consultant that will put this thing together for you. My wife, how many minutes? Whatever you need, the shortcut is near you. Oh, okay. Then it came to time to go to the bank. Then I now said, God now told me, do you have a banker in the house? I said, yes. That was when Sister Laura was, was bank manager and security service. I'm telling you, inside the church, you're looking outside, inside this house. It's inside, inside. I talked to Sister Laura. I said, Sister Laura, you are a manager of a bank? She said, yes. I said, um, can you help me put it? Within 24 hours, she put the plan together for me. I took it to the banker. They understood the mass. They give me the money. People don't, God will not bring you into a house and cause you to starve when there is the house of bread. Amen. What I'm telling you is the love of God is rich. It's plenty. There's plenty in his house. You have to open yourself up to that love for you to get it. If you close yourself, you come to church, you go your way. I don't talk to nobody. I just love the Lord Jesus. You will starve to death. The love is there, but you can't withdraw from it. Do you know how you withdraw? The debit card to God's love is people around you. Tell your neighbor, God loves me. I can't hear. Tell them, God loves me. God loves me. Let me give you the physiology. How many of you want to know the physiology? The function. This functioning of God's love predates our existence. Romans 5, 8. For God commended his love towards us. That even while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You will soon see that everything about the embodiment of God's love is personified in the person Jesus. Everything about this love of God, as you move from the anatomy, into the physiology, you will discover it's all worked out through Christ. That's why the Bible says, in Christ is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And we are complete in him. The Bible says, in him, all things consist. Everything that you need for life and godliness. Every expression of that love of God is found in Christ. Is found in Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, for before, why we were yes in us? God had made a provision for our sins through Christ Jesus. And that is why he died. Now when you look at John 3.16, what did he tell you? For God did what? So loved the world. So loved. God, pull up the scripture, it's a very popular one. God so loved the world. God's love. That he did what? He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever, this whosoever does not pay attention to color, doesn't pay attention to race, he doesn't pay attention to what nation you are from, whosoever believes. So that tells me that there is a believing in him to get the love more. Listen to me. As far as God is concerned, he has already released the love. As far as you are concerned, you must receive the love. If you don't receive the love, it doesn't change the fact that there is love. Yeah. It just doesn't work for you. Wow. I don't know whether anybody gets my point. Nothing you can do to change God's love for you. God's love from him to you. But there's something you can do to block God's love from reaching you. Is somebody getting my point? God's love is constant. There's a reason why I'm teaching this thing. I'm not just shouting it because people misconstrue what the love of God is. And from there, they go into the things where once saved, forever saved. He loves me, so I can just say, No, 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 no. You will soon discover 
that in that Romans chapter 8 where he was saying, what can separate us from the love of God? He didn't say sin. Go read it. You will see who can separate us. So he referred to persons. Now referred to situations, but he never referred to your act. You want to see it? Look at it. Read together. I want to go. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword. Okay? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay. Uh -huh. Go to the next place. You will now see where it said, for I am read it loud with power that neither death nor 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 nothing can separate us from the law was well, sin can block you sin is not in this place oh it was a pastor why are you saying that let me show you the book of isaiah <laughs> in the book of isaiah the bible was clearly telling us that it is our sin isaiah 59 We're talking about the physiology now. Functioning. How does the law function? Isaiah 59 verse 1. Be, everybody read together. I want to go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So when you sin, your sin becomes a blanket. His love wants to locate you, but the sin blocks him from locating you. So understand this. That is why Jesus came to remove the sin blanket so that the love of God can quickly access you. That is why you discover when Jesus died, immediately, one of the first things that took place was the veil that separated man from God. Tall from the top to the bottom. Signifying from heaven to earth. Nothing should separate you. That's why I said that Jesus Christ is God's love personified. That's why he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father except by me. What I want to tell you this, this morning is this. This love of God, if you don't accept Jesus into your life, and confess him as your Lord and your Savior, the love of God cannot benefit you. Because Christ is the perfect sacrifice of God's love for you and me. Lift up your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. I can't hear somebody shout, thank you, Jesus. If you permit me, I will give you a little about chemistry and I will share with you four truths and I will close. What is the biochemistry of this God's love? Anybody wants to know this today? When you look at biochemistry, you are looking at some reactions. Now, God's love did not start with you. God's love started with him. Everybody agree with that? First John 4, 19 says, we love because he first loved us. So it's God's love that first located you. It's not by your own activity that made God to love you. But if you look at Titus 3, it's a very wonderful scripture that I love. Sister Gabby, thank you very much. It's a good scripture.
Titus 3 from verse 3 to 5. Everybody look at this. The Bible says at one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appeared, he saved us, not because of the righteous things we had done, so listen to me. If you like speaking tongues on now to tomorrow, if you like give the greatest offering, if you like dance the biggest dance, if you like think of all the good things you can do, it's done by those actions that God loves you. Not by because of what we are done, but because of his mercy. Everybody say because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. So, when God wants to do a chemical reaction to show you his love, he will release mercy in your direction. One of the ways God will show you love because you don't, you don't deserve it, you don't qualify for it, he will throw mercy. That mercy will go and locate you. Now, the next thing the Bible says is that he will not remember the sacrifice of his son Jesus, the washing of the rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit. So when the blood of Jesus comes and says, God, I have cleansed him. Jesus tells God, I have cleansed her. She has accepted me as her Lord and Savior. God no longer sees you. God sees Jesus. I'm talking about biochemistry, chemical reaction. So when you now pray, it is no longer you that is praying. God sees his son praying. Because Jesus is at the right hand side of the Father. Making intercession for you. Even though God did not want to love you before. When he sees his son. He says, because I love this my son so much. Let me not disappoint him. Bless her. Then the Holy Spirit. That's the next part of it. The Bible says we do not even know how to pray. Even as we are. But the Spirit of God makes intercession for us. In accordance with the will of God. So the Holy Spirit takes over your words. And even though you are speaking things and God is saying, but this thing does not make sense. The Holy Spirit will say, hey, yeah, he's saying blah, 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 blah. But actually what that blah, blah means, Lord, is this and this. Interprets it like a lawyer takes up your case and expresses it to the judge. So anywhere your statements, your actions, Jesus will help you so that your actions are redirected. Jesus takes over on the cross. All your actions have been paid for. So Jesus brings his blood and says, Father, hear the blood. That's how the love reacts with you. Then the Holy Spirit takes your words and says, Father, this is what they are saying. Holy Spirit and Jesus takes your case before the Father. And say, Father, this is why you must help this person. That's why you discover that each time we come to the presence of God, the Bible says, let us down therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. That we will obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Because when you come to that throne of grace, mercy is there, available for you. Grace is there, available for you. The Holy Spirit and Jesus is there to help you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is why it is again important that your relationship with Jesus Christ, your relationship with Jesus Christ is the main thing that will enhance God's love. To reach you. I pray this morning in the name of Jesus. May the love of God reach you deeply in Jesus' name. There are four things you must know as a believer as I wrap this up concerning the dimensions and the expressions of God's love. Number one, every believer must understand what this love of God means to you as a person and to your family. Number two, you must understand and accept this love. You must understand the importance of accepting this love as God's lifeline from the power of sin and death. Number three, you must also understand that it is very vital you don't disregard the love of God. You don't take it for granted. No matter what situation you find yourself. Number four, you must also understand that it's important to share this love with others that are lost. Now let me tell you what number one simply means. If God is a God of love, you cannot describe love outside of God. God's love is himself. God's love is his person. God's love is Jesus Christ, his son, who came to die for you and for me. God's love is not an abstract, warm, and fuzzy feeling of our imagination. 
It is something down deep within our hearts. The true value of this love of God is found in Jesus Christ. For you to know Jesus is to know God's love. If you don't have Jesus, you don't have the best of God. If you don't know Jesus, you don't have the best of God. If you want to get the best of God's love, it's found in Christ. Your intimate relationship with Jesus Christ is the best way you can get the best of God's love. Because in Christ, everything about God's love is inside. So a man that has Christ has everything. Don't let the world deceive you. If you like have the best car, that best car cannot save you. It is the love of God that will save you. In the heart of every man, there's a void. I call it like the donut hole. That place is a place where the love of God feels. God sends that love in order to save you. So if God directs any love to you, if it will not react with that hole to bring about salvation, God will not send the love. That's why you discover when he said Jesus, he said there's no other sacrifice that needs to be made except that which has been made. Jesus is the once and for all. I'm telling you, if I like, I pray for you and God bless you with all the billions. That any of those blessings should help you have a better encounter with Jesus. That is what the focus of God's love is. Because God's love is for your salvation. For God commended his love towards us. Why we are yet sinners. Christ died for us. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. God doesn't want you to die in sin. So when God releases his love to you, the purpose and the intent of that love is not to let you have a wonderful husband. The, <laughs> I want to explain to you now. The, the importance of that love is not to help you have the next job. That is not the essence of the love. Those are the side things that you get from the love. Seek if the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. Understand, when God shows you love, it is not about the stuff, it's about your soul. God's love will nourish your soul. That's the number one thing you must know about this love. God's love should enhance your work with him. God's love must enhance your relationship with him. God's love must save your soul. May God save your soul. Number two, it's important to accept this love of the father. If you don't accept the love of the father, it cannot benefit you. Like I've already described to you here a few minutes ago. God every day will be wanting to reach out to you. This year, he will want to help you. He will want to touch you. He will want to minister to you. But you must open yourself to the Father's love. How did I know that? In the scriptures, the Bible makes us understand in the book of John chapter 4, that there was a woman at the pool. Jesus asked her. He said, will you give me some water to drink? You know what the woman said? He said, you are a Jew. I'm a Samaritan. You people don't, we don't have any relationship together. Jesus now told her, if you know who is asking you to give him water, you yourself would have asked me to give you water that, so that you will not test again. They were quickly say, oh yeah, I want that water. But she was looking for the water. She was looking for the physical water. That's what I'm telling you, that the, the love is not about the water. It's about eternal life. But you must accept it. You must accept it. Jesus now told her, you know, of course, we, we went into some conversations about we worship in this place. Uh, so we, uh, some of you know what you worship. Uh, no, no, no. At the end of the day, she now said, oh, we know one day the Messiah will come. And the Messiah will truly tell us where we need to worship and who we need to worship. You know what Jesus said? Jesus said, young lady, I am he. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Jesus before that time had not even revealed to his disciples that he was the Messiah. People were still guessing. But God's love was enough to locate a Samaritan woman who did not even have a husband of her own. Excuse me. I thought she was an adulterer. 
that tells me that God's love can locate anybody. If only you accept the love. Immediately she accepted the love. The Bible said that there was something that took place in her. She went all over and said, I have seen the man that told me. She encountered the Savior that day. Let me tell you, every day as you go out, God is wanting to reveal himself to you. Never be so conceited. Never be so religious in your own self that you deny yourself of having an encounter with the love of God. That's what I'm telling you today. I'll give you another one. There were two thieves on the cross with Jesus. One of them said, hey, if you are Savior, why not save yourself? I said, what's also? The other one said, ah, he did not do anything. We did something. He opened himself to the Savior. Let me tell you, in a twinkle of an eye, that thief would have been in hell. But let me tell you, no matter where you find yourself, I'm saying it to you, it may be your lowest point. But never think that you are too far away from the love of God. David said, if you would take me to the bottom, even if to hell, he said, there your hand will locate me. What I'm telling you today is that God's love can go farther than you can think. But if God is stretching his hand of love, don't reject that hand. That is what I'm telling you about this love. No matter where you find yourself. I pray for you today. In the name of Jesus, as God stretches his hand of love, you will not miss that hand in Jesus' name. Number three, don't take this love for granted. Don't overlook that love. And finally, this morning, I want to share with you, if you are a true believer, this love of God should not be your personal property. Some people, their faith is only about themselves, about me. Oh, I'm the only one enjoying it. Oh, God is just so good to me. No, 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 no. If you read Romans chapter 5 and verse 5, Romans 5 and verse 5, please pull up that scripture. Everybody read it together. One to go. It says, hope make it not ashamed. But the love of God is what? Shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. So, in the life of every believer, God has released a bundle of his love. And listen to me, God wants us to be conduits of his love to other people. If somebody preached to you, they preached to you out of the love of God, don't hold that love to yourself alone. That is how to truly know that you love God. You must make sure that that love does not stop with you. That the whole world know. I understand it may not be conducive, but it will take love. That same love that he remembered you for you to remember somebody. Yes, we're in the, we're in the grocery store. We are right there. We're standing in the queue. But you are telling someone, do you know God loves you? Do you know God really cares about you? But I just want to share this love of God with you. That is truly a person that has experienced the love. Because if God has freely given to you, you should freely share with other people. I pray this week, I pray this year, that God will express his love through us. In the mighty name of Jesus. First John 3.10 The Bible says, by this, the children of God and the children of the devil can be distinguished. How does God distinguish children of God from the children of the devil? He said, anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God. Nor anyone that does not do what? Love his brother. So if you do not love your brother, if you do not express the love of God, God said you belong to the devil. That is the way God distinguishes those that belong to him and those that don't. So, I share with you again today, with this love that God has given to you, make sure it doesn't stop with you. Let your work not be me. Only me. I pray only for myself. Only for me, my family, my business. Oh, me, me, me. No, 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 no. no. Do you know God's love will locate you on earth? You should be able to look at around you to see who you can improve with that love. First John chapter 4 verse 7, the Bible says, Beloved, let us love one another because love comes from God. And everyone that loves has been born of God and knows God. Finally, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 2. It's important that we walk in this love. Look at that. And walk in love. Tell your neighbor, walk in love. Say it like you truly mean, walk in love. As Christ has loved us and had given himself for us, as an offering, as a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savour. Now, walking in love is not easy. Let me tell you now. This love of God, do you know that you were a sinner when he died for you? Uh -huh. 
Many people will touch your nerve. Many people will do things that will make you say, you know what? I will never greet you again. But truly, it is the love of God inside of you that will make you say, no matter what you do to me, I will not change the way I react to you. That is truly someone that has experienced the love. Did you not hear when Jesus was saying that a person that sinned much, right? Is the person that will give much. But someone that feels that they are righteous, they will never love. Let me tell you, you are only standing here today because of God's love. Don't deny another person of experiencing this love that God has given to you. Do you receive the word of God this morning? Rise up to your feet wherever you are. Lift your hands and thank the Lord. Bless his name. Give him all the praise. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I want to experience your love all the days of my life. I want to experience your love. I want to experience your love. Lift your hands wherever you are. Say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I make Jesus the center of my life. Lord, I don't want to get carried away by activity. I don't want to get carried away by the things of this world. But every day, I want to yield my life to you in the name of Jesus. I want you to ask the Lord, God, in the name of Jesus, help me to open my hands to receive the love of God. Not to take this love of God for granted. In the name of Jesus, ask the Lord, I don't want to sin. I don't want anything in my behavior or my character that would deny me of experiencing the best of your love. So if there's anything in your life, there's a character flaw there's a sin issue in your life i want you to confess before god and say lord i repent today in the name of jesus be merciful and gracious unto me thank you father in jesus mighty name we have prayed amen lift your two hands above your head father we thank you for the power of your word we bless you we honor you we give you praise we give you glory lord we you have spoken to us concerning this love of god it's great it's wide it's deep it's high it's steadfast Lord, every day when we wake up, may we experience this love of God. May we experience the best of your love. Bless our hearts through this word. And may we live every day sharing this love to other people that are lost. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Clap your hands and give God praise. Thank you so much for watching this broadcast. We pray that this message ministered to your heart. If you are watching this message and you do not know Jesus Christ, we want to give you an opportunity to accept him as your Lord and Savior. Just say this simple prayer with us. Father, forgive me, for I have sinned against you. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you died and rose for my sins. I denounce and renounce any other God that I may have put before you. Jesus, save my life. If you said that simple prayer, we want to welcome you into the body of Christ. God is going to do some amazing things in your life. Join us at Bethel Covenant Assembly of God Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. at 6812 Bandera Road in San Antonio, Texas. And be sure to stay connected with us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube.